The UK has some of the richest fishing waters in the world. But while the nation has left the European Union, that doesn't mean Europe's fishing fleets are leaving British seas. And now local fishermen are disappointed that foreign vessels will still get a good chunk of their fish for years, and maybe even forever. And it's all because of the recent Brexit trade deal that the UK Prime Minister is calling a win. And for the first time since 1973, we will be an independent coastal state with full control of our waters. But beyond the headlines, the real story is that the deal falls short of the promises made to Britain's fishing communities. And it's just a travesty. Boris the Betrayer has completely sold us down the river. Fishermen in the southern town of Newlyn bring in the largest amount of fish in the UK and export the majority of it. But it's a tough job. It's by its nature challenging, risky, dangerous, unpredictable. The fishing port of Newlyn is closer to the French coast than it is to London. And the fishermen here have been competing for decades with fleets from the other side of the English Channel. Large, powerful, modern vessels fishing alongside the fleet here for coastal communities. So um, really that unfair um, competition, that, that constant fishing pressure in our, in our coastal zone will continue and it's not great at all for fish or fishermen. It all started in the 70s when the UK signed the Common Fisheries Policy as part of its membership of the EU. It meant that um, our fishing industry declined. At the moment in the EU, we only get to fish about half of the fish in our waters. The rest was set aside for European countries. The UK's coastal communities thought that leaving the EU would give them more control over British waters. And that's why more than 90% of fishermen voted in favour of Brexit. They were happy to use us for their campaign. And when, when push has come to shove, we've had to shove. And we've been dumped on from a great height. Under the New Deal, EU boats will still be allowed to fish in UK waters but the amount of fish they can catch will be reduced over the next five years. And of course, ideally, you know, the transition period of five years, five and a half years that uh, we're entering now would have been shorter. We wanted just three, but the European Union wanted 14. So we've got it way down from uh, the original point that the European Union was insisting on. Prime Minister Johnson asked the EU to give them 80% of the total value of their catch from UK waters, but instead, they settled on 25%. Fishermen were also hoping there would be more limits on where foreign vessels could go. That didn't happen either. EU boats will still be allowed to fish up to six miles off the UK coast. Some believe that Johnson compromised because the sector contributes only about 0.1% to the GDP. It may be a very small part of the economy overall, but actually, to coastal communities, it's often the only game in town. Still, fishermen say the industry was used as a bargaining chip in a larger Brexit trade deal. And if they just were honest and just said to the industry, look, we got a good deal for the country, but we had to sacrifice fishing to do it. If they just come out and said this, instead of trying to make it that they've got a good deal, you know, I could live with that a little bit easier. Meanwhile, EU fishermen, like Bruno Margol of France, are relieved. The French fisherman makes 80% of his summer earnings from casting his net in UK waters, pulling in whiting, mackerel and squid. Bah, mon, ma première impression, c'est un ouf de soulagement après quatre ans et demi de, de tergiversation et tout d'un côté de l'autre. C'est quand même un ouf de soulagement. Relief was also palpable in his port of Boulogne-sur-Mer, which is Europe's largest seafood processing centre. I'm not going to say we're happy, it would be exaggerated, but we are relieved, definitely relieved. 2020 was already very, it was a very difficult year. Um, it was very difficult for us to project ourselves in the future. Was like, what, what's going to happen? What are we going to be able to do? Even with this deal, the future looks uncertain for both sides. The UK can actually withdraw the EU's access to its waters in five years. But if it does so, tariffs could be imposed on the UK's seafood exports to the EU. And that could end up hurting the fishing industry even more. When you read the small print, we will never get it back. And the fact now, we're worse off than before Brexit. Because it's all written in that we won't be able to get it back. 